Today we're going to learn how to make removable arm rods for your puppet. Now I have a love-hate relationship with removable arm rods. If it's something that you want to put in your puppet, really ask yourself why. Whenever possible, I try to stay away from doing removable arm rods, because the last thing you want is an arm rod coming off in a time that you don't want it during a performance. So you really need to think about the reasons why you want the removable arm rods. But one excuse a lot of people tell me is because they want to be able to change the clothes on their puppet. In my opinion, that's not the best reason for wanting removable arm rods. There are other methods to doing that. If it's just for clothes, I highly recommend you make the clothes removable rather than the arm rods. Put a zipper in the back, put Velcro in the back, or something like that. Because no matter what technique you use for removable arm rods, there's always a chance that they could come off at a time that you don't want them to, which is not a risk that I'm usually willing to take. And there's a whole, another whole method for removing arms on a puppet if you need to change clothes as well. So if you have to do it, this is a technique that I would recommend. So this is my character Arlo, and he does not have removable arm rods. But if he needed to change his outfit, there's another technique that I came up with for being able to change the clothes quickly. And that is just having the entire arm removable. I like this more because it's either on or off. It's not like an arm rod that might slowly start slipping out or be able to twist and turn inside, which would affect the performance. The arm is either on or it's off. Another nice thing about this is it gives you even more possibilities to make changes. The original reason why I even did this was to change out the arms to have a live hand version. So now I can just pop off his old arm and put on the live hand version. And now all of a sudden this character can have a live hand. But I have another version of a removable arm rod that I can show you. Now this character is Max that you've seen in a couple other videos before, and this character did have to be made with removable arm rods. In the film, this character had to sit on a couch, and we wanted the one arm to be able to sit in the middle of the couch, so we just pinned it there, and we didn't want to have the arm rod sticking out, which is why we had to have removable arm rods for this guy. But I experimented with a different technique for this one, which has some pros and cons to it. For this one, what I actually did is I took the arm rod, and I made that P shape like you normally do in my other arm rod video that you can see here, and then I used a really Really heavy thread or you could probably even use a string and I sewed a big a really big snap onto it and then what I did was I made a little pocket on the inside of his hand just like that inside the pocket the other end of the snap is sewed inside there so that way we never had to worry about this kind of arm rod slipping out because you can hear it snap in and the only way to get it off is to snap it out so inside the puppets hand you, you would stick this up inside the pocket and then push on the whole hand together and you'd hear that snap and you knew you were good. The only trouble with this type of method is that a snap can actually spin in place on there. So you lose a little bit of this type of manipulation with your puppet. But that depends on a couple factors. Mainly how wide the pocket is for this, which will depend on the type of snap that you use and the size of the hands and many other different reasons. What's nice about it, it is quick and easy. You put it in and then you know you're attached really well. You have full control this way, twisting it, but again, you, you can lose a little bit of slack um, because it can move back and forth that way. So I can't stress it enough. When you're building a puppet, think about how you're specifically going to use that puppet for your production before making these types of decisions. And again, I can't stress it enough. Try to avoid doing removable arm rods if you can. For this video today, I am using a slightly thicker arm rod though. This is the 1 8 inch rod. This is the kind of rod that I use mostly for theater productions and things like that. So I already did a video on how to make arm rods. So if you wanna learn how to get this far, click on the video right there. It's the exact same process. The only difference with that video and, and this is at the end of the other video, it tells you to bend it into a P shape. That's so you can put the finger wires on it, but we're not gonna do that part of it for this. What you wanna do is a one inch bend into this rod. These are one inch squares for your reference, just so you can see. So, so I bent it that much. If you wanna do a little bit more or a little bit less, that's totally fine. So this is the hand pattern that I wanna use for this puppet. So what we're gonna actually do is create a little sleeve for this to, to kind of rock into it like that. So it makes it really secure. And the best thing I found to use for that is this type of tubing. This is the same exact tubing that we used for the hooping video a couple months ago. The one we're gonna use has an outer diameter of 1 4th. That seems to work well with the rods that are 1 8 inch. If you have a different size rod, I recommend taking the rod to your hardware store and just testing it with different tubes in the store and pick the one that works best for you. First thing we wanna do is make a hand plate that'll hold the tube that'll hold the rod. So I'm gonna draw it in about here I'm also gonna attach the finger wires to this plate too, 
So I want to make sure that I leave room for that. Actually, I'm going to have it come up to the thumb like that. So that way it's really easy to tell which side is the top and the front. Okay. I like to leave about a quarter of an inch around the edges so that there's room for the foam. Now what I'm actually going to do is fit this tubing onto that rod like this. So that way I can just trace exactly where I want it to be. And I think right about there. Now you want to have the bottom of the tube just peeking out like that. Okay? So I'm going to mark all these things. I'll mark the tube. And I'll mark that too so I know where to cut it. And I'll do that snip right now. So right now this tube is measuring to be just under two and a half inches. It might be different for your puppet though, depending on the size of your hands and the size of the rod. So once we cut out this plate, we're going to have to attach this tube to the plate. Now unfortunately, there's no type of glue that'll work on this, so we have to use ties. And I have a special little technique for doing that too, which I'll show you in a little bit. But either way, we're going to have to make registration marks on where we're going to uh, drill little holes into it. So on this size, I found that about five works well. So the first one I'm going to put is right in the middle there, and then I'll add two on each side, make sure I'm not getting too close to the edges. Okay? So each point where these cross through is going to be a drilled hole at some point. Okay? First thing we're going to do now is cut out this pattern and then we're going to trace it out and cut it out. Okay? And I'm actually going to trace, I'm actually going to cut out this center piece too. So it's just easier to trace. There I have my hand plate pattern. Now you could use a thin plywood for the plate or really any stiff material that you want. But my favorite thing to use is plastic from a lid container. This is the same kind of plastic that I use for a lot of the mouth plates. You can see that in this video here. So now I'm just gonna trace out this plate. as well as hitting those registration marks, which I'll just do these lines like this, connecting those spots. Now when you cut this out, you're gonna cut around the whole thing just like that. Don't cut out the center piece. We only did that on this so that it was easy to trace. Now we have the two plates cut off our hands. Now we're gonna drill the holes in those little marks. So now I'm gonna drill those little holes. I'll use the smallest drill bit that I have, which is a 1 16th. A good idea to put a piece of wood down too so you don't drill into your table. Drill at all those marks. There's gonna be 10 marks. And I just remembered we have to put the holes for the finger wires as well. So let's mark that right now. So to do that, I'm gonna get my handy pattern back and lay this right where it goes like that. And just make sure that I line up those holes. I'm actually gonna do, you can do one hole, but the way I like to put it in, I'm gonna do two little holes for each one. So I'll do two there, two there, and two there. I'm actually going to back these up together like this and drill through it all at once. And I don't recommend doing that for the holes of the tube, but it should work fine for this. So now he'll be able to have poseable fingers too. Now the wire that I use to attach the tubes is the same wire that I use for the poseable fingers. This is an 18 gauge galvanized steel wire. I'll put a link to this down in the description. So I'll start cutting off pieces about three inches long. I'll need 10 of them total. Now you're going to want to carefully bend them in half, but don't make it a sharp point. Just kind of make it a nice soft bend like that. And do that with all of them. Kind of like these little horseshoes 
are these little staples. So first one I'm gonna do is the center one. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more for that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take that tube, put it right in the center, and then slide both ends of that wire in just like this. Now, just like a twist tie, you wanna carefully twist this on the back. Okay, just a little bit. Just to kinda of make sure that it's snug. Okay. Now this is the time to adjust the tube. Make sure it's at the right spot. You don't want it sticking out too far at the bottom and you don't want it too high up. You want it to come just about a quarter of an inch past the bottom of your plate. So that way it's sticking out of the foam once we wrap this all in foam. So just like that, okay? After you uh, place it just right like this, you wanna come on the back and use some pliers and then you can't just rely on twisting this by hand. You have to also twist this with the pliers so that it really gets tight up against the edge. If you over twist it, you could pinch right through all the plastic. You can probably see how it's slightly pinching the tube. That's how you know you've got a nice good fit. Now if you can't pull that out, you know it's just right. It also makes it easier to do the other ones once you trim off the, the tails there. So now I'll do the next one. And there we have it, one side is done. Let's test it by putting this rod in there. So this can slide right in there. And now that is gonna be really nice and snug. Now I'm gonna do the other one really quick. Now I'm going to quickly do the posable fingers too. Let's pull a length out, about that long. You make it as long as you need it for your puppet. Okay. So we're going to bend them into little staples just like we did for the other ones. Now just like before, I go in both holes just like that. Pull it tight. And then I just bend it up. I'm gonna twist them together just like this. Okay, so let me check out the length on these now. Place it right there, okay. Now at this point for the posable fingers, you can pretty much follow the directions on how to make puppet hands. That video you can see right here. The steps are pretty much the same. But I'll do it, I'll do it now anyway for completeness. So what I do is I clip these down to the same length of the fingers.
You might be thinking it's strange to do it to the exact same length because then it might poke out. But what I actually do then is I just bend the tip of the finger down so that gives me a little bit of room so it's a little bit shorter, which it should be, so there's room for the foam. And it'll also keep it from being sharp and poking through the fabric and foam. But don't bend it too far down. Just a little bit to roll that edge. Now one more thing I like to do to the fingertips before we put the foam on is I actually like to coat them in hot glue. For people who know me, they know I don't actually like to use hot glue for pretty much anything, especially anything structural, but the only reason I like to put it around the wire for the fingers is two reasons. Um, the wire can get fatigued from going back and forth, so it kind of gives it a little bit more support. And also it coats the metal to block moisture from getting to it so that the metal can't rust. And like I said, either way, you get sandwiched between foam anyway, so again, the hot glue is not structural at all. I just use it to encapsulate the wire. Now while that glue is drying, I'm going to show you another method that I had tried before that I recommend you not doing. That twist tie method where we use the wire to tighten it is the best way to attach the tube to any kind of surface. Because again, that type of plastic does not take adhesives. Other things that I've tried is using different types of strings or ropes, and this one here is even a leather cord that I tried. Nothing but those ties have been able to have enough tension to make sure it doesn't slip. Because think about it, when you're putting this rod in there, it's using a lot of force. Which also brings me to why I don't really like removable arm rods that much. If you do it for yourself, it's not too bad, but especially if you have a client that you're building a puppet for, it's one of the first things to break. Not because of the quality of the build so much, because people who didn't build it tend to not put too much care into jamming these arm rods in. They either push it too far, or they twist it the wrong way. It's one of the first things to break when you sell a puppet. So I highly recommend just dodging it completely, unless it's unavoidable. So anyway, I pre-cut the foam hands for this puppet. Again, if you want to see the process for that, check out the hand video. Now I'm gonna glue them in. My favorite kind of glue to use for this is contact cement. Most puppeteers tend to use a contact cement called Barge, but this brand is called Masters. I kind of actually like it a little bit more but I mostly use it because it's something I can get locally. But if you only have hot glue, that will work just fine. Now I'll coat this in it. Make sure you don't get it inside the tube. Though again, it won't necessarily stick to it anyway, but. So you have to let this sit till it gets tacky. It usually takes like uh, seven to 10 minutes. Okay, they're pretty tacky now. Okay, I'm gonna place them in now. Just make sure you have the bottom of that tube sticking out from underneath the foam. So watch, let me place this with a thumb there. Attach those fingers in. Kind of form the fingers around it. Let me move this over. So again, I want to make sure that that tube is sticking out from the foam visible. The only thing that should be visible once this is all closed up. You can see that little tube there. And we have some posable fingers. So once you have it here, what, the last thing I like to do is put glue along these edges as well and then really sandwich it together. I'm going to do that real quick.
Okay, now that these are dry, I'm going to pinch it together. And here's what I do. I like to start up here at the tips of the fingers and kind of push them up as I pinch them, which kind of brings it to like a nice little point like that. You see that? Just like that. That also keeps the, um, the metal from pushing through as well. So it is kind of important to at least do the fingertips, okay? But it's nice to do the rest of the fingers too. Now here, I just gotta be careful that I don't close up that uh, tube. And just like that, we have the perfect little hands with a removable arm rod, just like that, that are also posable fingers. Look at that. The next step would be to cover this with fleece or fur. To check out how to cover a hand in fur, check out part three of the Monster series. The only difference is you wanna leave a little hole so there's a place to put the arm rod into. You can glue the edges of the fabric down as well. To see how to cover a hand with fleece, check out the original hand video. Again, the techniques are the same. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them on the Crutinger Puppets Tutorial Q&A Facebook group. That's a really quick way to get an answer to your questions. And if you finish a puppet, I want to see it, so make sure to tag me in it on Instagram. I've got a ton more tutorials planned, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. We'll see you next time.